My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you, brother. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm coming from Los Angeles. I go by the name of Tristan Victor, and I'm grateful to be here. This is an awesome day. Awesome. Let's dive into success principles. What are some of the top two principles that you think entrepreneurs, individuals need to know? Yes, perfect question. So the top two straight from my mind is gratitude and breathing, or in other words, meditation. These are sometimes overlooked on how simple they are, but how effective they are on a daily basis. You know, the attitude of gratitude is what connects us to the source of all, all of our blessings. And a lot of times we don't realize how, for example, in meditation, what we see in the outside world is simply just a reflection of what we're seeing in the inside world. So what I see in a, a lot of individuals when it comes to success is that self-talk that is going on in their heads every single day. So gratitude opens up a space for you to shift what you're seeing in the outside by shifting what you're seeing in the inside. So by being grateful in every moment for everything, you realize that life isn't happening to you, but it's happening for you and through you. And breathing and meditation is another form of relaxation. And there's this book by Maxwell Maltz um, called Psycho Cybernetics. And the whole book, it's all about improving your self-image of how you perceive yourself. And Maxwell Maltz, by the way, he was a professional surgeon who found in common with all his patients that even after plastic surgery, some of his patients, one, wouldn't see a difference, even though it was pretty obvious that they looked different. And number two, would still feel like they weren't beautiful or weren't, you know, where they wanted to be. So he, he did this research and he wrote this book, it's a uh, psycho cybernetics, um, all about self image. And the book, surprisingly, as I read it, was all about just relaxation, learning how to relax, learning how to use your mind. But in using the mind, it's learning how to relax so that the thoughts that you do want are being presented instead of the thoughts that you don't want. So those would be the main ones, gratitude and breathing and relaxation. So you could get yourself in a space of relaxing and being grateful so that the mind, the success mechanism that Maxwell Mott talk, talks about, that we can learn how to maneuver through these thoughts and this self-talk on a daily basis. Does that, does that resonate? I, I agree with that. But here is the reality. What happens for a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners we get caught up in our work. So a lot of times you may not, it may not be in front of your mind to be thankful, have gratitude and, and, and be able to do that. So sometimes we literally have to put an alarm where it notifies us that, hey, you know, be mindful of this because when you're in business and you have employees, you have businesses running, you know, a lot of different things are changing. The economy's changing on, on daily, hourly basis. A lot of different things are happening. It, it makes it a little bit uh, difficult and challenging if you're not conscious about it. Now, the other part is a lot of people that I talk to, they think if you meditate, you're going to become successful. I think meditation is part of your life journey. I don't think it's something that you do to become successful. It's got to be, it's in a package deal. It's got to be together. It can't be one way or the other. So that's one of the, the key elements that I took away from that. But how, how, how should we be... How should we have gratitude? What are some of the methods we could do? You just look up to the sky and say, thank God for what I have? <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate how you open up the space to everyone has such a different lifestyle. And at times it's difficult, especially in the United States or in any very industrialized economy where it's this consistent, fast pace where we don't always have the space or time to really sit down and, and be grateful and move through that. Plus meditation, you're right, I really resonate. Meditation isn't um, going to make you successful, right? If you just meditate all day, every day, you're not going to receive the results because you're not taking any action. So the intention plus the action creates the results. So I definitely resonate with you. And opening up the space as well to really understand what we're talking about here. Like what does success even really mean? I feel like that's a, a really strong conversation to have as well is understanding what success means to every unique individual and not 
you know, being mindful of what we're choosing to pursue and why we're pursuing it, you know, and for example, answering your question you asked about what, how can we be more grateful? Well, what has helped me at least in my journey is number one, redefining what success means to me. I was very involved uh, at an early age. Um, I was very involved in finances and in the world of business and I used to wear a suit every day and that was my lifestyle and it was really great. It was really where I needed to be at that time. When I was about like 19-ish, I started the meditation. I started more of a spiritual path, which was an awakening to say the least. And I started doing more of the inner work. And when I started to understand what I was really looking for when I was pursuing all these things, you know, pursuing uh, success in the terms of material items, I started to understand that success to me, and there's a great def definition that success to me is just a pursuit of happiness. It's a pursuit of what allows me to be happy on a daily basis. And it's not on what I can find in the outside world, but it's more so of what I have already found in the inside world. So what we could be grateful for is it's really the small little things. You know, Gary Gary V. Uh, for those of you who follow Gary V. He has this cool practice where every day he he imagines that someone close to him has passed away, like his mom or sister. You know, and he puts himself in this dark space, not to get him down, but to realize, wow, the temporary nature of life and how everything's changing so quickly. And you bring up, because since we live such a fast-paced life sometimes, we don't always take the step back to realize and appreciate the people, the events, the opportunities, and the experiences that life has to offer us. And last thing I'll share is that I feel it's super important to understand that the destination is a journey. And that's not a goal that we reach that's gonna make us happy. And it's not the material success that we reach that's going to make us happy. Because if that was true, then by definition, every rich person would be happy. And as we know, that's not the case, right? The grass isn't always green on the other side. So it's like redefining, in my experience, that the success is already here. And that the gratitude is in the appreciation of the little things. And in that vibration or in that feeling, that's what you're going to find, what you're really searching for, because you're be, you'll be in a good mood, you'll be in a good space, you'll be in a good vibration, then people are going to be around you, then all of a sudden, you know, the law of attraction starts to kick in, and then you just start attracting more of what you're putting out, and that's what's going to come back into you. Is that, is that right? I agree with that. The grass is not green on the other side. The grass is where is green where you water it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, in California, you shouldn't water your grass anymore because you don't have any more water. We sucked the uh, Colorado River dry already, but <laughs> that's uh, that's a different topic that we can get into that. But you know, it's 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 very funny that you brought up that because I was talking to one of my buddies about that. That if money would make people happy, then we should have a lot of people. We should have a lot of happy people in Beverly Hills. Right. But as you you know that, you know, that's not the case. They might look happy outside. They might be smiling outside, but that doesn't mean they're happy inside. And, you know, diabetes is in rise. Uh, obesity is in rise. Uh, divorce is in rise. People having more fights is in Domestic violence is in rise. Like, homelessness is on rise. So we have all of these problems. And then we got like four people that are happy. So we look <laughs> at the four people that are happy where the 96 people are not happy and all of these different things are happening. So money is just a tool. It's how we use it. But if you don't accept yourself internally and you're not happy with yourself without any money, then any money coming in is not going to make you happy because, I mean, think about that realistically. How many bedrooms can you sleep in at any given night in every night? You could be in one. How many cars can you drive at any given time? one? How many planes could you fly in at any one? So I think anything over 250,000 in California, it's overkill. Anything over 250,000, it's not going to add to your lifestyle. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to make money. That just means it gives you a lot of other options, but those options are not going to make you happier. So. Uh, if 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 your success and the result is is a monetary compensation, um, you may not have that fulfillment. You might have the money, 
but you don't have the fulfillment inside. Exactly. It's just a different way of thinking. It's just a different yeah. way. Of yeah. And, and not it's... everybody needs to, not 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 everybody needs to agree with that. And somebody else commented over there: suicide is on rise, definitely. And in a lot of different states, we see that that you know it's challenge. You know, people are struggling. So just being there for your family members and the people that are going through challenges. Here's what I wanted to share with you. Mm-hmm. You know, in a lot of cultures, especially in LA. When you walk around, everybody says, hi, how are you? What's up? How you doing? But is that really what we're asking? Or we're just brushing it off? Because a true person that cares will take a moment and say, are you doing okay? And it's not like the person says, yes, I'm okay. I think there is a there is an extended conversation that needs to be there. You're like, do you need anything? Are you really okay? Like, <clears throat> I know everybody says, yes, thank you, but that's on the surface. You got to get a little bit deeper in that if you care for the person. So you really got to, you know, it doesn't mean you have to go ask everybody that question, but for the people that you care, I think if everybody does it, it will become a, a, a part of our culture where everybody could say, you know, why not ask if you're okay? If you're not okay, hey, let's go meditate together. Let's just go sit there for like 10 minutes. I'm not asking for your whole day. I'm not asking you to take a day off. I'm just asking for 10 minutes. We just go sit. It could be a downstairs by the, by the, by the, you know, it could just be whatever. We don't have to be in a comfortable clothing. We could just literally sit there right. and close our eyes. Just that action and you doing it with somebody else might actually make their day. Yes. Yes. I really resonate. Thank you for sharing that. You know, you're bringing up the, the value of the human connection. And I want to open up the space as well to share that I feel, especially even in LA, I host a lot of ceremonies in LA, which basically I bring people together. We meditate, we do pranayama breathing, which is breath work, we do different, different exercises to get people to relax, to tune in. And then we do like a group exercise to connect. And what I've found on these ceremonies and these journeys is that part of why it's so difficult for people to authentically connect with other humans is because they're disconnected with themselves, right? Um, there's a super powerful book called Be Here Now. It's, a, it's this book right here. It's by Ramdas. And the whole book is all about being here now, being in the present moment. And a lot of times when you're in LA, people are in their thoughts. They're in the future. They're about getting to their emails, getting to work, about the next, the next thing. And then so when they're in that space or they're in the past about this just happened, I didn't show up on time. So when all that's going on in their mind, it's hard to create the authentic connection because there's all this clutter, you know, in Hinduism, they, they explain the mind in the metaphor of a monkey. They say your mind is like a monkey. It's like a monkey who's drunk. It's like a drunk monkey who got bit by a scorpion who's always just like, ah, going crazy. <laughs> so it, it can, you can just imagine that if this is our minds on a daily basis, it's it's very challenging to to learn how to sit and learn how to be present with people and presence i feel is is what we need to start sharing more and someone brought up suicide rates earlier well suicide rates are are rising because mental health the the challenges of mental health is rising as well with all the noise with social media with so much distraction so much going on people's minds are just going everywhere so what i have taken into account is that to lower the suicide rates we really have to focus on mental health and through mental health it's learning how to clear and calm the mind it's all about in my experience presence and the power of words there's this word that's common it's called it's abracadabra it's a very common word it's abracadabra and what that translates to roughly is i speak into existence what i say and that's super important because everything we say, you know, they say spelling. And when, when we're spelling things, there's the word spell. So we're like casting a spell onto our reality when we're sharing words. So to be mindful of the thoughts that we're having, the words we're saying, that level of mindfulness could really shift your whole reality. Because a lot of times, you know, I'm with people, I'm, I'm in out there in L.A. or just in different group settings. And 
you notice one how hard people are on, them, on themselves like they're always criticizing themselves i could have done better i could have done this better i should have done this why did this happen this constant self-criticism over a long term period of time that really it's really going to weigh you down and then your self-image is going to be so destroyed you're going to think you're not pretty enough you're not beautiful enough you're going to think that you're not strong enough confident confident enough you're not masculine enough not feminine enough and all these words and ideas that's what really creates this mental sickness of our self-image that really ultimately then you're in this really dark space where now you're contemplating if you if you should even exist last thing i'll share of why this is so important is that Tony Robbins, really great, you know, coach. Um, I've been to a few of his seminars. He shares three basic emotional human needs that we all have in common. And he shares it's being safe, feeling safe, feeling like we belong, and knowing that we're loved. And if we have these three emotional needs met, that we feel safe, we feel like we belong, and we feel loved, then we will be in a space where we can be our authentic self and we will be, allow ourselves to be open to express our characters and have fun. So my mission is to help people feel that by allowing myself to feel that on a daily basis, right? So if for everyone watching this, you know, behind the screen, if, if you can make that your mission, just allow, make people feel safe, make them feel like they belong and make them feel loved those three things it's like a green light like ding 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 check 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 then you'll notice how the interaction will change because if, if those three aren't being met then the individual is either in defense mode or they're like you know not really opening up or they don't feel like they belong so they feel out of place or they don't feel loved so they feel distant so if you feel if you if you allow all those three needs to be met and in any interaction what I have found in these ceremonies is that people start opening up to me. I start opening up to them. And then just from like 30 minutes of talking, we're now we're like lifelong, you know, buddies or friends and we really trust each other because we're meeting ourselves in that space of vulnerability and authenticity. Is that, is that right? I agree with that a hundred percent. Love Tony. Love Tony. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we get to do more. I appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone who's watching this. I love you. Have a beautiful day. You too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Peace.